in, in no undeniable way, even now, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, Lord, that you anoint every chair. I pray that you assign an angel to every seat, even right now, God, as we sit in these seats. Oh, God, Lord, I pray, God, Lord, that people are sitting in seats, Father, God, Lord, of deliverance. I pray, God, Lord, that we're sitting in seats of healing, that we're sitting in seats of joy, that we're sitting in seats of peace, that we're sitting in seats of love, and that we're sitting in seats of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, even now in Jesus' name. Forgive us for our sins, God, if there's anything God, Lord, that we have done, God, Lord, since last week to now, oh, God, even since yesterday to today, oh, Father, God, that's unpleasing in your sight. Oh, God, we say forgive us for our trespasses, even as we forgive those that trespass against us. Hallelujah. Even now, God, in Jesus' name. And so, God, we ask you to transform every darkness into light. Any spirit that's not like God, we command you to get up and take the flight. We pray, God, Father, God, that every corner, every shadow, hallelujah, Father, God, will be permeated with your divine light. Even now in Jesus' mighty name. So touch your lips of clay. May they only say what you would have them to say. Even now in Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Let the church say amen one more time for the Holy Spirit. Let the church say amen. If you have your Bibles, then I ask you just to get them out. Glory to God. Amen. Your Bibles, your cell phones, your tablets. Amen. Pull your swords out of your sheaths. Amen. And I ask you just to pick them in the air like you just don't care. Glory to God. Amen. Put them in the air. Amen. Just repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. There are many like it. There are many like it. But, but this one is mine. This one is mine. I will read it. I will read it. To see what it says. To see what it says. I will study it. I will study it. To show myself approved. To show myself approved. It's a lamp into my feet. Lamp into my feet. It's a light into my path. Light into my path. And because of it. And because of it. I am blessed. I am blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus name. If you can turn in those holy Bibles to the book of Matthew. Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 17. When you get there, just say, I have arrived. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 17. Amen. When you get there, just say, I have the word. I have the word. Amen. It's on page 1162. <laughs> All right, I'm going to read for the sake of time. Amen. Matthew chapter 17. And it says, <clears throat> And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Oh my God. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man, save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, why then, say the scribes, that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias has come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spoke unto them of John the Baptist. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. 
And the child was cured till that very hour. Two more verses. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast them out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Turn your neighbor and say, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Turn your other neighbor, amen, because I want to sleep in it. And say, Lord, please have mercy. Lord, please have mercy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's the title, amen, of the of the of our talk. Amen. Amen. On this morning. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a familiar chapter. Amen. Glory to God. It should be a familiar chapter. Glory to God. Amen. We're counting. Amen. A point. Amen. In Jesus' progression to the cross. And so this chapter starts out, amen, six days, praise God, glory to God, amen, after certain things happen, amen, with the upper room, amen, the communion, amen, and the last supper, amen, and some other things happen, we see the scene that Jesus is up on what we call the mountain of transfiguration, that's not the actual name of the mountain, amen, but biblically and theologically we call it the mountain of transfiguration because of what happened on that mountain, and we see him up there praying. Amen. Now, before I get into this, amen, one thing that I would like to say, amen, and I gave this information to my son, amen, my youngest son yesterday, glory to God, amen, because I don't know, have, is there anybody in here, amen, that has ever lost their keys? Glory to God, praise God. You ever look for something that you know is in a certain place all the time, amen, glory to God, amen, but Right when you need it, it ain't there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anybody else? Is that only ever yeah. happened to me? Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And you're looking, and when invariably what happens is you go back to the same spot that you believe that the thing is always, always in, Jesus. even though you already know went there two or three or four times and it still ain't there. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Doesn't that make you upset? Yeah. It makes you upset. Amen. And one of the things, Amen. Um, that you get from old school, amen, from, from, from mothers and grandmothers and glory to God and grandfathers, amen, they used to say, um, everything has a place and everything has a, has a thing. Hallelujah. And if you put your things in the proper place, My God. you'll never lose them. My God. Anybody ever say that to you? Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. So I have a habit. I'm a military guy and all of that, and I, you know, I believe in order and all of that, amen, but I believe even if I never was in the military, I like to put certain things in certain places. So if you come to my house, amen, if you get to observe me, you want to know that I put my keys right next to the door. Amen. I put my jackets in a certain place or my coat, whatever, in a certain place. My hat, amen, my work stuff, I put it in a certain place. <laughs> my wife is smiling at me. Glory to God. Because I'll put it in a place where my wife will come behind me and put it where she wants to put it. Amen. But I know where I like to put my things. Anybody here with me this morning? Glory to God. Because I believe that everything has its proper place. If you put your things in its proper place, how I many know you'll never lose them? Hallelujah. You'll never lose them. So there's no reason for me to look to be looking for my house or my car keys. Can I put them in the same place every time? Amen. Glory to God. Y'all like, how does this relate? Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So invariably when these things happen, what happens? You go and you ask somebody, you might ask your wife if you're married, or your husband, or you mean your child, amen, or whatever it is. Have you seen? My keys. And what's one of the things that they would say to you? Either no or where was the last place you saw them at? Anybody ever do that to you? And you say, well, if I knew that, I wouldn't be asking you where my keys were. Anybody remember today? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And this is what happens. Amen. There's a proper place. For everything under the sun. And if you put your things in their places, you'll never lose them. Amen. I'm going somewhere with this. Glory to God. Everything has a place. And everything has a thing. And when you put your things in the proper place, you'll never lose them. Now, of course, Jesus would have been 
a big proponent of this as well. Amen? Because what? He was God incarnate. He was God in the flesh. Glory to God. Amen? And so Jesus, glory to God, in keeping with his nature, glory to God, he was a creator. Y'all know his job while he was in the flesh on earth? He was a carpenter. Yeah, yeah. You ever think about that? Out of everything that Jesus could have been, as far as we say 2022, living his best life, yeah. he could have been Pharaoh of Egypt, because he was in Egypt at one time. Glory to God. He could have been, amen, Pontius Yeshua, Pontius Jesus. Glory to God. He could have been the governor. He could have been, glory to God, he could have been king. Amen. We know that Satan tried to tempt him, amen, with these different things. Amen. But in all of these things that he could have been, the job that he chose was to be a carpenter. That's it. That's it. You ever think about that? Jesus was always true to his nature. That's it. He chose that because that's who he was before he was ever in the flesh. He was someone that created. He was God in the flesh. Amen. So he created, amen, when he was in the spiritual form. So when he came to earth, he said, well, that's the thing I'm going to do. Glory to God. And how many know we should take a lesson from Jesus, amen, and follow our nature? That's it. A lot of us are so dissatisfied with our lives, amen, and a lot of us are so upset, amen, because we're trying to do things and to go in the field that's not in keeping with our nature. Hmm. Anybody ever tell you to follow your passion? Yes. Yes. Amen. If you follow your passion, glory to God, you will arrive into your place of purpose. Come on. A lot of us, amen, are depressed and we're going through all of these motions and we have to take all of these drugs and some of us are doing illegal drugs and smoking all that weed or whatever. Why? Because we are not satisfied with our lives. All right. But if we follow, amen, what God put in us, our nature, and be who he called us to be, glory to God, amen, how you know that every day on earth will be a, will be a blessing? Yeah. It'll be a blessing. Yeah. When you're doing what, amen, what you really were put here to do, how many you know it don't feel like work? It don't feel like work. Say it again. Glory to God. Amen. When you're doing what God really put you here to do, amen, it's not, it, you don't feel like you're going to work. You feel like you're going, amen, glory to God, to fulfill your destiny. I know it's just me. Glory to God. It ain't nothing like, amen, glory to God, when we're traveling, going to different countries, amen, to preach the word and minister. Amen. Because that's what God put me here for. Glory to God. Praise God. I don't care. Praise God. I could be the president of the United States. Glory to God. Amen. I don't think that will fulfill me. Glory to God. But I know why God created me. Hallelujah. And when you're, walk, when you're walking in your purpose, Woo! glory to God, that's when you're truly living. Hallelujah. When you're doing something other than that, all you're doing is existing. Amen. And you can become miserable. Glory to God. Praise God. Now, I'm not speaking against anything because how many know sometimes you got to do what you got to do Amen. to get to where you want? Glory to God. Please hear me that I'm being balanced with what I'm saying. Amen. But when you are walking, glory to God, in your purpose, it ain't nothing like it. All glory right. to God. Yes, sir. Amen. Keep it in keeping with this line of thought. Jesus knew exactly what went where and what did. And he also knew who should go where and who shouldn't. Yes, sir. <laughs> I started out, glory to God, amen. And it says, after six days, Jesus take who? Peter, James, and John. My God. His brother. And bring them up into a high mountain. Somebody say high mountain. He only took three on the mountain of transfiguration. Glory to God. He chose 12, but he only trusted three. Amen. All right, let me turn to this side of the church. Glory to God. On, he chose 12 disciples, but the Bible says he only took Peter, James, and John. Hmm. Is it possible that the reason that we have not arrived at our greatest purpose because we've been taking too many people along with us. Amen. My God. My God. Jesus. Is it possible Amen. that we have been trying to include too many people Amen. into what God has called us to do? Amen. Glory to God. I want us to learn the lesson. The name of this message is Lord have mercy. Glory to God. And if we follow the wisdom of Jesus, we understand we say Solomon is the wise man alive, but the true wisest man that ever alive was Jesus, because he was God in the flesh, of course. Praise God. Glory to God. And if you follow him, he did things. 
always teach you, God never gave us his opinion. Jesus never gave his opinion. He only spoke truth. You'll never read any of these scriptures where Jesus says, and I think that, and it's my opinion. He didn't do that because he was God. And all everything he said was declar declar declarative and true. Amen. And that's why our words should be true. And that's why the Bible says, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Too many of us get in trouble because we are too opinionated. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. But that's neither here nor there for this morning. Glory to God. Watch this. Not everyone can ascend the heights that God wants to take us. All right. Glory to God. So if you're trying to take too many people, how many know you're hampering yourself? Now, how many know not, not everybody has been created for your mountain experience? Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. We all have a different mountain that God has purposed for us to ascend. Some of us, glory to God, will wind up in the same arena, maybe in the same vicinity. But your mountain is not my mountain. Come on, sir. My mountain is not your mountain. Right. So if I try to take the wrong person, I yeah. know God will even oh, deny me. Because this person is not worthy yeah. to be on the mountain that he created for me. Come on. Hopefully this is not going over our heads. Come on. Some of y'all going to get this on your way home. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to God. But not everyone can ascend to the heights that God wants to take us. As a matter of fact, some people are afraid of heights. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. If I do it right now, how many of y'all afraid of heights? So y'all don't want y'all lying. Y'all lying in a, I rebuke that lying in spirit. Glory to God. Because I know it's more than one person in here that's afraid of heights. But it's neither here nor there. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Praise God. Prophet Joanna, she's the only true person in here. Glory to God. <laughs> there are a lot of people that are afraid of heights. Glory to God. Praise God. When I was in the military, we had to do a lot of stuff. Glory to God. And you're up and you're in the planes, you're in helicopters. We're repelling off of the top of, 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 of buildings, off the side of a tower. Glory to God. And it ain't, listen, glory to God. even if you're not afraid of heights, you have to check yourself. Like, what am I doing? Why am I jumping out a perfectly good airplane? Mm -hmm. Why am I joking off the side of the building? Glory to God. Amen. But you learn this because you probably know it will come into play one day. Amen. If you're ever in war or conflict, glory to God. Glory to God. But all I'm saying is that not everybody can ascend because not everybody, amen, is made the same way. And that's the real reason that they always tell you that, let me say it like this, that's the real reason why these people, glory to God, will say um, that you shouldn't do that. Are you following me? Amen. People that are afraid of heights and you're trying to take them with me, when you talk about your mountain experience where God's telling you, they will say, I don't think God is calling you to that. <laughs> Not because what you said was wrong, but because they're afraid of heights. Yeah. So if I want to take you into the Himalayas, come on, come on, brother, I'm going to take you to the Himalayas. If you're afraid of heights, they're going to say, no, nah, Pastor, I don't think God is saying that. Are you sure the Holy Spirit is saying that? And they can see you? God. And so it's not the, the real reason is not that they're haters, it's the real reason is that they are afraid right. to ascend yeah. and then the heights and then that you're built for. Mm -hmm. And then if you talk to uh, a jet uh, fighter, somebody that's in the Navy or in the Air Force or whatever, even the Army or whatever, and then and they fly jets and whatever, how many know they're different? Anybody ever see Top Gun? Tom Cruise? And then y'all need to watch that movie, the old one and the new one. Glory to God. They're different people. They're a different breed of people. That's why you see them walk around with the sunglasses. They just, they like, you know, little gods on earth. Amen. They're just different. They ain't afraid of nothing. Glory to God. And they, it exhilarates them. It gives them a rush. Some people are just different. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. How many know we need people like them? Amen. So that we can have a strong air defense. Glory to God. But not everybody is built for that. You can have the knowledge of it, but you ain't built for that. As soon as you go 10,000 feet, you are uh, 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 uh. Yeah. in the back. So you go, uh, uh, whatever. Yeah. So some people, glory to God, have a hard time flying on airplanes. Glory to God. And all of that. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. And so we have to know how God has made us right. and our constitution. Amen. And so when you figure that out, let's say, okay, well, you're a good ground person. Yeah. We're going to keep you on the ground. Yeah. Glory to God. You might be better on the ground than the person that's suited for the air. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. I'm giving you wisdom here. Glory to God. But yeah. Jesus knew exactly who needed to be where and who didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Peter, James, and John were mountain people. Yeah. 
the rest. Hey! Hallelujah. On, Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We all have friends. We all have different categories of what we call friends. We have associates and all of that. Praise God. Amen. But how many know that not everybody is supposed to be in your inner chamber? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we only, some of us only have maybe one or two, if that much, confidants. Mm -hmm. Where I can tell you anything and I know it ain't going to go nowhere. And I know you ain't going to change on me. And I know you're not going to judge me. Anybody here with me today? Praise God. I know you're not going to use it against me. I know that. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. We don't have that many people. Glory to God. But Jesus only trusted Peter, James, and John. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. There's a, uh, well, this is many, this is many years ago now. But amen, but it was a story, glory to God, amen, of a pilot, well, a couple of pilots, glory to God, amen, and they were flying, glory to God, and they heard, um, they heard a sound in the cockpit, and the sound that they heard in the cockpit was snakes. It was a rattlesnake in the cockpit. And so, of course, they called down, said, oh, we have an issue. Houston, we have an issue. There's, there we have a snake. We believe it's a rattlesnake. There is in the cockpit. All right, and so ground control, I mean, air traffic control said, all right, we need you to ascend to 20,000, to at least 20,000 feet. And so the pilot was like, what, is that, what good is that gonna do? Again, we have a snake in the cockpit. And they said, we need you to ascend to 20,000 feet. But we got, and they explained to him that snakes can't survive in high altitudes. Glory to God, praise God. And of course they followed the command and the snake died, glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. And how many know just like that? Glory to God. Amen. Some, hallelujah, snakes, hallelujah, that are connected, amen, to us in our lives. Glory to God. Praise God. Cannot sin. Glory to God. Amen. As God, amen, is taking us higher, amen, in Him. The Bible says, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. But how do you know that if we look into the hills, amen, that means He's calling us higher? Amen. And so to go higher, some of us have to allow, amen, some of these, amen, glory to God, snakes to fall off. Anybody hear me today? Amen. I know the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, amen, yes. this morning. Glory to God. Praise God. I'm not saying that these are bad people, but they are not designed to go where you're going to go. For where God wants to take us, glory to God. Glory to God. How many you know? We have to be to delineate and differentiate, amen, praise God, who is able to go with us and who just has to stay, amen, in a certain place. Glory to God. Amen. Because you can't allow, praise God, amen, the perceptions and the opinions, glory to God, of snakes to keep you from your mountain. My God. My God. Hallelujah. Mm. Simply, not everyone can experience the mountain. Not everyone that you count, you can count on. Mm. Also, not everyone is able to embrace moment. Not everybody's able to embrace the moment. Anybody ever have um, something really good happen to you? And you expect everybody to celebrate with you? And the people you expect to celebrate with you don't? Hallelujah. Everybody can say amen on that. I, it happened to me. It just recently happened. I'm looking like, oh, I expected this person to say, oh, congratulations. Praise the Lord. You know what Nothing. Crickets. How many know that, that speaks just as much as a person that says something, amen, when it's nonsense. You put nonsense up, Lord. But when you don't say the right thing, amen, now you see that God is blessing me, how many of that speaks to me about you? Yeah. But he's the same people that as soon as something happened to them, why you didn't say this about me? Why they want you to celebrate them? Yeah. Please hear me. This is real talk. Glory to God. Amen. But as soon as you up, but he's the same person that come back, oh, I love you so much. Yeah. I love you. Glory to God. Praise God. And you'll see them blessing everybody else and picking up everyone else. Amen. Now it's my turn. Yeah. Quiet. Quiet. Yeah, right, you say, well, what happened? What? I thought, yeah. you love me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Not everyone is able to embrace the moment. I know a pastor, glory to God, and he's in Burlington, New Jersey. Glory to God, amen. And we used to live down there, amen, when I was in the military, Fort Dix is near Fort Dix. Glory to God, amen. His church is Mount Calvary. And he told me, he told us the other day, glory to God, that he has a place in his church. 
Glory to God for people that are not able to embrace the moment. Amen. He, he said it's in the balcony. Amen. On the last two rows, he said that's the place for them. We were laughing. And he said, no, I'm serious. Glory to God. For people, praise God, amen, that don't know how to praise. He said, they, that's their place. Go up there in the balcony. For people that say, it don't take all of that. Why don't you just sit down? Why are you always trying to make us say this? He said, we put the way in the back in the balcony. Why? Because they're not able to embrace the moment. And what he was saying, he says, I'm not going to let them mess it up for everybody else. Come on, sir. He was dead serious. Yeah. He's like, I ain't going to let you mess it up. You feel that way? You go in the back, all the way up there in the back, and you sit in the back with other people. Because guess what? He was explaining that misery loves company. Yeah. And people will come in here with their miserable self. Glory to God. And get mad because everybody else is happy. We get mad because somebody else wants to praise God. We get upset because I'm happy. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Glory to God. Praise God. I wish he just be quiet. But how many know we can't let that spirit infect everybody else? Amen? Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You enter into his gates with what? And into his courts with what? Oh, come on, everybody. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, not just one. Everybody come into his presence with singing. Amen? Clapping and overjoying. How many know we got to learn how to praise God? Amen. But not everybody is able to embrace the moment. Glory yeah. to God. Praise, Lord. praise God. Glory to God. Amen. So how many know we got to be wise so that we don't allow these people, we ain't saying anything wrong with them, but you ain't going to mess up everybody else's moments. Right. <laughs> the Bible says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. And we have to have the right atmosphere. Yes. If you want, amen, glory to God, breakthroughs, amen, to happen. Amen, glory to God. If you want God to have his way. Yeah. Jesus was comfortable with Peter, James, and John. Because he knew he could be himself. He prayed until he, and the Bible said, until blood came out of it. Jesus was not one of those closet Christians. <laughs> he was Jesus the Christ. He prayed, the Bible says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man of hell. That's the word of God. Amen. That's the Bible. Amen. Glory to God. I didn't say you got to be loud. I didn't say you got to whatever. Amen. But if you really want something from God. Yeah. Glory to God. They say, if they ever say you have cancer, if they ever say heart attack, and they run you back, if they ever say these things, I guarantee you, you are not going to want the body to show up at the hospital and, and start whispering. You're going to want somebody to show up in your bed and say, in the name of Jesus. Any spirit that's not like God, I command you to leave this place. You're going to want somebody that knows how, amen. Glory to God to say, the blood of Jesus is against sin. You want to want somebody that has a relationship with God that's not afraid, glory to God, to speak what it is, and it is so. Yes, Lord. Somebody that can control a spiritual atmosphere. Anybody hear me today? Yes, sir. Just wait till you're in that situation if you don't believe me. Mm -hmm. You're going to please. you going to want, uh -uh, uh -uh, please call apostle. Please call bishop. Please call. I want the right person in my bedroom with me. All right. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. God. Amen. And so, we got to be able to embrace the moment. So, not everybody can ascend the mountain because they can't embrace the moment. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. The moment was designed to give you momentum. Mm -hmm. The word moment is actually in the word momentum. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. So, if you never even had the moment, come here, you ain't going nowhere. If you don't even, that's what church is about. That's why Jesus instituted the church. One day out of the week, whatever your day, Saturday, Sunday, whatever your day, glory to God, come in. Glory to God. Amen. The Bible says faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Amen. Allow that momentum. Glory to God. That moment, glory to God, amen, that we gather, amen, in the house of God to, to propel us through the rest of the week. Glory to God. Because if I don't have my moment, how many know? And if I don't have my moment on Sunday, I just might cut you out on Monday. Yeah, God. Right. Hallelujah. I know, I know I'm just talking to myself. Glory to God. Glory to God. I need that moment yeah, where I get focused again. Yeah, God. Where I can remember. That's right. God said, trust me mm -hmm. in all my ways. Lean not to my own. That's right, God. You 
told me that if I do that, you Hallelujah. will direct my path. Hallelujah. Oh, that's right. God said, praise God that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Oh, I just need that moment. I need somebody to remind me. Look at God. Praise God. Amen. That he'll never leave me nor will he forsake me. I just need that more moment. Now I'm reminded that settled me. Now I got peace again. Now my faith has been lost again. Now I can go forth. Amen. But just understanding that God has not left me. That he loves me. He'll never leave me, nor shall he forsake me. Glory to God. Praise God. The moment was designed to give you momentum. Yes, God. Yes, God. So don't get, you know, don't get caught up, amen, glory to God, in anything else. Also, don't get caught up in the moment. That's it, that's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need the moment, but don't get caught up in the moment because life is not lived in that moment. Hallelujah. There's power in the house of God. That's There's it. believers in the house of God. Hallelujah. But I know that as soon as you walk outside of these doors, you mean the devil is waiting for you. Yes. Glory to God. So we can't get caught up in the moment. We got to take what we learn, wow. the power, and then and utilize it once we walk outside. All right. That's it. Here we are. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, Peter wanted to make temples. I read it to you, right? Matthew 17. He wanted to make temples. Amen. Jesus prayed. Glory to God. Amen. And he prayed. And the Bible says Elijah and Moses showed up. Anybody ever prayed that hard before? Hallelujah. How many know Jesus was praying? He was praying. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So much that he ripped the dimension from heaven and earth. Hallelujah. And Moses and Elijah showed up. Glory to God. We had the law and we had the prophets. And they showed up and they talked into the word. Praise God. And we see yes. Jesus saying, oh, are you sure that this is how I am? If I do this, is the calculations right? Am I right on time? And glory to God. Praise God. We don't understand what Jesus was saying because he wasn't scared. Glory to God. Praise God. But I believe that they were getting their strategy together. You're right on track, Yeshua. Glory to God. Just keep what you're doing. Judas is right over there right now. They're on their way. I give you about 30 minutes and I want you to go back down the mountain. Jesus. Listen, they were given strategy. Hallelujah. Strategy. Glory to God. And Peter woke up and he saw Moses and Elijah and then talking to Jesus. Can you imagine? What would you do if you woke up and you see your Jesus? And not just Jesus, but Moses. And Elijah, and the fact that Peter knew who they were, that's it. mean that the Holy Spirit, that's it, that's it. He was full of the Holy that's Spirit. Right, that's right, right. Glory to God. But Peter got caught up in the moment. He says, Let me make temples for you, and for Moses, and for Elijah. How I many know we got to be careful that we don't get caught up Amen. in the moment? Right. Glory to God. He said, Let me build some churches. I'm going to make a denomination for Moses. A denomination for Elijah and a denomination for Jesus. Uh, please hear me. Glory to God. So much it, 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 it puts something in God because God spoke from heaven. He says, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Listen to him. God said, Let me keep the record straight. Glory to God. And the Bible says that when Peter looked up his eyes again, they were gone. They were gone. Glory to God. God just took Peter, James, and John because he knew it was going to be a mountain experience. That not everybody would be able to handle it. Glory to God. Even Peter was about to handle it wrong. Even though he already told Peter in the chapter before that upon you, I'm going to build my church. Hallelujah. The moment was designed to give you momentum. Yeah, God. But don't get caught up in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't get caught up in building monuments. Glory to God. Praise God. Because it's all about Jesus. Anybody agree with me? Amen. It's all about God. He's supposed to get all the, all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Amen. That's why you have to watch people. Glory to God. Praise God. You'll never see me put the ministry in my name. This ain't Larry Burchett Ministries. This ain't all of that good glory. Because it ain't about me. It's about God. So what happens when I die? Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to God. Hey, is this not supposed to go on anymore? Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. You are a woman of God. You are a woman of God. 
Glory to God. That's the picture for me, so. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Tell you, anyone knew I was thirsty? No, I was thirsty. Glory to God. You talk, okay. Anyway, so anyway, <laughs> don't get caught up. Don't get caught up in the moment. And then yeah. word was brought to me. Listen, some people can't experience or enjoy the mountain. All right? Mm -hmm. That's why, listen, I want to give you this wisdom. That's why you can't post every little thing, little aspect of your life on social media. Right. Praise the Lord. Somebody should have said amen right there. Amen. You can't go around posting every little single thing of your life on social media. It's not for everybody. Amen. And you know, if you're the kind of person that you feel like you got to post every little thing, you are living a shallow life. You're living a very shallow life. Because you should get enjoyment out of the people that are in your life more so than people that don't even care about you. People that don't even love you. People that can care less if you die today or tomorrow. Glory to God. And if you get more enjoyment out of their likes and loves than the people that, that God put in your life that like and love you, you're living a shallow life. Post some things, but not everything. Oh, I'm at the corner store. Oh, child, this person just uh, just cussed me out. Oh, I'm going to the Phillies game. Oh, this my daughter just said this. Oh, my son, yeah, they know everything. And the people that are in your life don't know anything. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord, somebody. The person like, I wish she would talk to me like that. I wish she would give me that much attention. I wish he would give me, talk to me like that. I wish he would give me that attention. Lord God, you posing every little thing. And how you know, you're also giving the devil ammunition. Mm -hmm. Because the devil is not omniscient. He's not all-knowing like God is. No. Don't let him fool you. He don't know everything. No. He only knows what you tell him. And that's why you got to yeah. grow in your prayer life. That's what the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues is all about. And then because it's a heavenly language just between you and God. Amen. And sometimes, glory to God, the devil is able to attack you because you're speaking everything in English. But when you ask God for that heavenly language and the Holy Spirit gives it to you, now you're able to go and you're able to speak in your special forces language that only God himself knows. Amen. And you're able to say, hey, yama, oh, she, oh, da, da, she, yana, ma, ma, oh. Well, whatever it is and whatever language God gives you is just between you and God. And now the devil, amen, and his imps cannot intercept and interfere. If you say, God, oh, if you don't do this for me, but by tomorrow, by 9 o'clock, oh, we're done. We don't know what's going to happen. Oh, God, oh, God. I mean, the devil like, okay, we need to stop that from happening by 9 o'clock. How do you know? She just prayed. Please hear me. It seems, it seems silly, but this is practical, spiritual wisdom. Yes, sir. People say, I don't need it. You need it. You need it. Amen. That's why the Bible says he understands your gruntings and amen and all of that. He even said your tears are our language to him. Amen. We need to spend some time. Yeah. Where, where my real prayer intercessors at in here? Glory to God. We need to spend some time before God. Yeah. That's what Tuesday night is about. It ain't just about coming and getting a little word. You need to come and make it for prayer time as well. Amen. Prayer. The more prayer you have, the more power you have. More prayer, more power. No prayer, no power. Some of us don't have no power. And we go up to Satan, in the name of Jesus, you're like, you don't get your little son out right here. But you never pray. You don't even have a relationship with God. Peter, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? <laughs> who are you? Glory to God. Amen. When I look in the annals of heaven, because how many know that Satan is able to have access to heaven until a certain point? I don't see a thousand prayers. I don't see 2,000 prayers. I rarely see 10. Mm -hmm. mm. And the prayers that we do pray, the Bible says we pray amiss. Yes. We pray for ourselves. We pray for cars. Yes. We pray for all of that. Money. Glory to God. So we see Jesus getting a little perturbed at his disciples because they should have been able. I'm skipping forward. Amen. Matthew 17. I read the whole thing so I don't go back and read it again. Amen. Glory to God. But as soon as they come off the mountain, whatever they say, he was approached by a man, right? And a man, and he brought his son, and he says, I, I need you to come, glory to God, amen, because my son needs deliverance. I, I came to your disciples, but your disciples wasn't able to do it. And so we see Jesus, amen, as a little perturbed as his disciples because they should have been able to deliver and produce healing for the child. Yeah. But they couldn't. <laughs> see, the man came to the right place. But he wasn't able to get the right results. He went to Jesus' disciples. 
Did he do something wrong? He didn't do anything wrong. What do you do when you do the right thing, but you don't get the right results? My God, my God. I told you earlier that everything has a place and every place has a thing, and when you put your things in the right place, you'll never lose them. So what happens when you go to the right place and you still lose? And you still lose. I mean, that's why a lot of people quit the church. Praise the Lord, somebody. That's why a lot of people walk away from supposedly men and women of God, women of God, because they get so upset. I mean, really, they're upset at God. It ain't the person. They really are upset at God. God, why didn't you come through? I finally came to church. I did this. I've been doing a little right, but, and then you still allow this stuff to happen. Oh God, what did he do? Well, see, we see what the father did, right? He said, forget all the side acts. I don't want Matthew. I don't want, glory to God, I don't want Judas. I don't want all of these other guys. I want to go straight to the source. Praise God. He said, forget all the side acts. Just give me Jesus. Forget all the pretenders. Just give me Jesus. I don't want to be around people with no power. Just give me Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't have a praise on your lips. That's okay. He said, just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. You don't want to worship? He said, I do. Just give me Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And how many you know we got to know how to stop going from the side acts and maybe start going to the source? Oh. Glory to God. And when we go to the source, how many you know there's power in the name of Jesus? Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus. Give me Jesus in the morning. Give me Jesus in the evening. Give me Jesus on a Sunday. Give me Jesus on a Monday. Just give me Jesus. And I'm all right. That's me. That's where I'm at. Just give me Jesus. Glory to God. I don't care who's here and I don't care who's not. Just give me Jesus. Because if it wasn't for him that was on my side, I don't know where I would be. It was him. That came when the person put the gun in my head. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the gun didn't go off. It was Jesus that was there for me when they took me into the top. They was trying to take me to the top of the building. They robbed me. And man, had me a gun point and tried when I lived in Southwest Philly. Trying to take me to the top. But we got it. Something said, don't let them get you to the top of the building. I turn around, hit the guy. I can't tell you how I got out of the building. It was about three flights up. I just saw myself running on the outside of the building, going to get my uncle. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to God. It was God that came through for me. Glory to God. But I can give you so many testimonies. Glory to God. It wasn't nobody else. I could easily not be here right now. But God came through. I owe him my life. If he would allow me to die while I was still in my sin, I would be separated from him forever. But by his grace and his mercy, he brought me through. So I owe him everything. everything. So just give me Jesus. You can be all, oh, I'm cool and all that stuff. Praise God. You do you. Yeah, but I'm going to do me. Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. So why was Jesus upset at his disciples? He was upset because he left nine out of the twelve. I left most of the church. I just took a quarter of the church with me. So I left enough power in the valley to be able to deal with any of the church issues. So why do they have to wait until I come off the mountain? He got perturbed. Yeah. And how many know a lot of pastors get perturbed? Because there should be enough power out there. The same power, glory to God, the same Jesus that's up here is the same Jesus that's out there. Right. It's the same Holy Spirit. It's the same Word of God. It's the same God. So when somebody come to you, there's no way they should get turned off. Amen. There's no way they should not be able to hear a word. Amen. There's no way. Because one man or one woman cannot handle it for everybody. That's why Jesus implemented the church. Yeah. But how can you, how can you, if how can you, how can you operate it in the word if the word ain't in you? That's it. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Glory to God. There's some things, yes, you have questions in the beginning, but you keep on coming, you keep on hearing, you keep on learning. Now, you become the teacher in those areas. All right, sir. That's how it's supposed to work. Yeah. After a while, I've learned it, I've heard it enough, yeah. I got it, Pastor. Mm -hmm. 
I got it. You don't got to see Jesus. What you need? I, I got all that. I, listen, this is what the word says about that. I got you. I'm going to show you. This ain't me. I'm going to show you. This is what it says. Let's pray. Yes. Come on, sir. Glory to God. But he was irritated. He was irritated. He was irritated. He says, oh, faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring them hither to me. Bring them here. Let's see what he's saying. How long? I ain't going to be here forever is what he's trying to say. How long do I have to do these things for you? Glory to God. Hmm. Praise God. Hmm. The man, praise God, had to find another person's faith. Because, glory to God, he believed the report of the doctor. He believed the report of the doctor. Glory to God. I already told you. Glory to God. And he came. Praise God. And he came to Jesus. And the first thing that he said, glory to God, amen, is that um, my, my son is epileptic. Glory to God. The doctor said, praise God, amen, that my, uh, my son is an epileptic. And if, and if that if, if 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 that wasn't bad enough, Amen. Glory to God. He agreed with the diagnosis. How I many know doctors? Amen. They're professionals. Glory to God. Amen. I'm a spiritual doctor. They're medical doctors. Amen. But how I many know that nobody's perfect? Nobody knows everything. Glory to God. The medical doctors are practicing medicine. Glory to God. Praise God. And they're telling you what they think because they don't know everything. Praise God. And how many know you don't have to agree with every diagnosis that a doctor says about your life? I wish somebody would say amen. There's so many things. I remember when I was young, they said I had asthma. Glory to God. My dad says, no, he doesn't. And they try to put me on pills. They try to do all this kind of stuff. My dad threw the pills away. Glory to God. He said, I see this boy running up and down the street. He playing basketball. He does not have asthma. I don't care what your doctor says. Glory to God. Yeah, he might have had a cold, he might have been wheezing on that day, but he does not have asthma. And man, if my dad would have never did that, I would have never had a 19-year military career. Because if you have asthma, and man, you can't be accepted into the military, you know, FBI, and all of these different things. Glory to God. How many know you don't have to accept the diagnosis of everything that everybody says? Please, I wish I were at a church this morning. Glory to God. You need to be able to say, okay, doctor, I hear you. Glory to God. But I don't receive that. In the name of Jesus, I listen, glory to God. I ain't talking about being silly and all of that. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying. Amen. But if you have a relationship with God, glory right. God, you know, the first thing the doctors want to do is prescribe medicine. Mm -hmm. Amen. And now uh, the next thing they do, they, they want to do a surgery on everybody. We got to do this surgery. Praise God. We're going to take this out. Matter of fact, we're going to take this out. You know you don't need that, right? You can walk around like, I feel so empty. But the gracious. <laughs> and they took everything out of you. Goodness gracious. That's the first thing that they said. They just want to cut. Glory to God. Like, I'm hungry. You ain't hungry. You just don't have nothing inside of you. Glory to God. Praise God. But we have to have a relationship with God. Some of you understand what I'm saying. Glory to God. And then in my family, I have to block a few things. Like, ah, oh, too much. Too much. They always want to cut you. Glory to God. Glory to God. And if that, if it wasn't, if that wasn't bad enough, the disciples even evidently agreed with the doctor's diagnosis. Glory to God. This is why they could not heal the man. Glory to God. You can't agree with man's diagnosis and God's declarations at the same time. You can't agree with man's diagnosis and God's declarations at the same time. What I'm saying is don't elevate the word of the devil over the word of the Lord. He always going to have something to say. But you got to remember what God has said. If God says you want to live to be an old age, amen, if they're telling you, amen, that you only have it so you can live, you got to say the devil is a liar. Because God already told me, praise God, that I'm going to go to the nations. And that hasn't happened yet. And you got to go to God and put God on the carpet. God, you see. Y'all remember the story of Hezekiah, right? The, 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 the prophet came to him, glory to God, and says, get your things in order. Praise God, amen, because, amen, you don't got that long to be here. And the Bible says that Hezekiah turned to the wall, and he started praying to the wall, glory to God, and then he started talking to God, amen, and he said, God, don't you remember that I did this for you? And God, I did this, and God, you said I'm going to do these things, praise God. And 
the Bible says that he heard his tears and he, he saw his tears and he heard his prayers and he added to his life 15 years. Amen. Amen. But if he would have accepted the word, glory to God, amen, that he wouldn't have that much longer to live. Right. I mean, um, that he would not have had an extra 15 years to serve God. Anybody hear me today? Praise God. God is not upset when you bring his word back to him. As a matter of fact, he says, I honor my word more than my name. Yes, God. I mean, if he said something concerning you, I mean, you know, it is something. Yes, it is. And if it does not come to pass, I mean, you know, it makes him a liar. So write it down. Everything that he said concerning you, write it down. Pray it in your prayers. God, you said. Mm -hmm. I'm still holding God, amen, on the carpet for some things. Amen. Before we ever started, amen, in the church, amen, an apostle came and they said, glory to God, amen, that somebody's going to give us a building. That's it. That's it. I'm still holding God to that word. Because this ain't it. This is not the vision that God gave me. Glory to God. We praise God for it. Amen. This is our fourth building. Glory to God. We praise God for it. Amen. But this is not what he showed me. Glory to God. And I'm holding him to the carpet. God, this is what you said. I didn't say it. Glory to God. It ain't about me. Glory to God. Because it ain't about just building. God, you got to give the building and you got to give the people to fill it up. That's it. That's it. Praise the Lord, somebody. Glory to God. We don't want to be in a big, empty building. Amen. God, you got to bring the people. Glory to God. God, you got to take care of the finances. Glory God. Because we can't do it. Anybody here with today? Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. And I got to bring it back to him. Abba, Daddy. I'm sure you wouldn't put me out here to fail. If we fail, they want to say, you fail, not me. God, if we fail, you are going to be the one that's be shamed. Yes, God. Because they know all I ever speak about is you. Yes, God. Anybody hear me today? Yes, God. Yes. I'm making it personal, but make it personal for the life. Hallelujah. Don't elevate the word of the devil over the word of God. Watch this. Jesus was also upset at his ministers because we saw what he did, right? When he encountered the man, Glory to God, when he encountered the, uh, the child, what happened? He rebuked the demons out of him. Right. Instead of worrying about the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Anybody here with me today? Yeah, yeah. Glory to God. Uh -huh. He didn't go and say, well, let me see the pills, let me see the diagnosis. Oh, the doctor, he, he didn't do that. What happened? He rebuked the demons out of him. <laughs> I want somebody to learn from this. Glory to God. Praise God. Again, he just was, he's an epileptic. Oh, it's a medical issue. How many know not everything is medical? Some things are spiritual. All right. I know y'all don't want to hear this, especially in 2022, because they try to make everything so unspiritual. We live in a Western culture, amen? But if y'all was over in the Dominican Republic with us, glory to God, if y'all was over in Jamaica with us, and y'all go to Africa and all these other places, how I many know it's so spiritual over there? Yeah. Over here, we got all these nice doctors and all this medicine and insurance and all of that kind of stuff, amen? But over there, you don't have that. How I many know you better have a prayer life? Hallelujah! Hallelujah, somebody. You better be able to be able to trust in God and lean up to your own understanding. You better be able to apply the blood of God. Amen. Because over there, you got wish doctors on one side and you got a few believing people on the other side. Hallelujah. And the wish doctors have more faith in the, the so-called Christians. They have more faith in their God and their yeah. people, glory to God. They see all the spiritual things. And if you are somebody that they don't take all that, you be dead in the 30 days. Hallelujah. So they put that little hex on you. What's this growing out of my neck? What is going on? What is that going on? Right. If you don't have a prayer life, right. mm -hmm. <laughs> that'll get you out of there, Jack. Fast. Fast. Don't be playing with spiritual things. Amen. Don't be playing. Glory to God. Because it ain't a game. Glory to God. We was in Dominican Republic and we went into one of the stores. No Bible around. But you know what we saw? The occult. The occult book. How to do the occult. How to do it. I'm like, look at this. Look at this. I'm like, let's get out of the store. Glory to God. But it's their way of life. It's right next to Haiti. Hmm. Anybody know the history of Haiti? They use voodoo to get out of slavery. It's just the truth. Glory to God. So it's their way of life. Glory to God. So the man had to find another person's faith. Glory to God. Because he had believed in reporting the doctor. And how do we know that? Because he came and he said, the doctor said, my son is an epileptic. So and if that wasn't bad, amen, the disciples agreed as well. And you can't agree, amen, and then try to deliver someone, amen, out of, out of man's diagnosis. Glory to God. Praise God. So, glory to God. The disciples had agreed with the doctor. And evidently, what they were doing is they were trying to pray something away that wasn't even true. 
Praise God. The doctor said that I have this. So evidently I must have it. So I need you to pray for this. So now you got to pray for something that's not necessarily the case. Because I'm praying, glory to God, amen, for something in your big toe. I'm just making something silly. I don't know why I think I'm talking about them. Glory to God, praise God. Glory to God. When it ain't that, it's really spiritual. It's spiritual. You all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's really spiritual. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. You have to decide if you want to be delivered from a, a diagnosis or from a demon. Amen. And I know a lot of people, amen, they might be in TV land right now, and, and, and people, I know people don't like talking about this kind of stuff. But as this, is, this is the stuff you want to talk about in the church. Glory to God. I don't understand why we live in a generation where, where people talk about God and they talk about Satan, heaven and hell. Glory to God, but how can you cast out devils that you don't believe exist? Glory to God. They exist. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. And so you have to be able to approach them directly and deal with them directly. Some of you are still in certain sicknesses because you have taken the doctor's diagnosis to heart. Praise the Lord, somebody. Lord. Some things are medical. Some things are spiritual. Amen. You can't diagnose what you're supposed to deliver. Mm. Oh. <laughs> somebody should start rebuking right now. Oh, yeah. uh, praise the Lord, somebody. And then last year, I think I met with God, the Holy Spirit directed me to tell you, amen, to go home, amen, and, and, and amen, we get some oil, amen, and I told y'all to drink it. How I many of self-deliverance, glory to God, praise God, amen, is so important. Glory to God. Jesus spent hours in prayer. Yes. Hours in prayer. That's it. What do you think we're supposed to do? That's it. How, how many of you know, amen, that demons are all around all of us? Yes. They can't possess you if you're a true Christian, but they can oppress the heck out of you. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And some of you are not Christians, even though you think you are. Amen. And so they are inside of you, and you need to be delivered. I know preachers don't normally say that, but I'm going to tell you the truth. You need to be delivered. You need to be delivered. Hey! Glory to God. Hallelujah. And some of your children need to be delivered. I'm going to tell you straight up. Some of your children need to be delivered. And stop playing games. If you love them, you'll bring God in the situation. And this is what made Jesus mad. So you're playing games when I taught you. You should know Y'all seen me bring people back from the dead. Y'all seen me heal the blind. Y'all seen me heal all kind of manners of sickness and, and cast out all manners of demons. Y'all seen me. What are you down here doing? They were dealing with his diagnosis. <clears throat> hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even today. Hallelujah. I hear the Holy Spirit. Some of you need to go home. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You need to anoint your doors. Hallelujah. Any doors that are interest to your home. If you have a back door, you need to anoint that as well. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And y'all need to go and y'all need to open those doors. Anoint it in the front and in the back. Glory to God. Open those doors. You need to walk through your house. Glory to God. Amen. And you need to say, in the name of Jesus, anything that's not like God, I command you to get out of this place. Yes. Hallelujah. I hear your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And some of y'all need to do that today. Yes. Glory to God. Take some holy, if you got some vegetable oil, amen, some extra virgin olive oil. Glory to God. Amen. Bless it. Pray for it. You can do it. Amen. Bless it in the name of Jesus. I will transform this. Don't ever use it again for cooking. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want you to anoint your doorposts of your home. Amen. Open up your windows. Amen. And I want you to go through your home. Amen. And if you have, if you can speak in tongues, I want you to speak in tongues. If not, you just speak in your English. Glory to God. Or whatever language you speak. Amen. And you start denouncing any demonic covenant that I made. I cast it. Any black magic, any voodoo, any obia, any juju, any santeria, any root work, any word curse, and nothing against me. I pray it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I send it back to Satan. Glory to God. Amen. And I want y'all to go. Amen. God says deliverance. He's the happen in the house of God. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Some of these sicknesses, amen, are not physical. They're spiritual. Some of y'all actually need to repent. I hear your Holy Spirit. Some of y'all need to ask God for forgiveness. 
God forgive me, I repent. Amen. Go to God. Amen. There's some sicknesses, amen, that Jesus, when he healed, he says, your, your, your sins are forgiven you. Yes. Go and sin no more. No more uh, please hear me. Please hear me. Glory to God. Because some of us have been playing with fire. Amen. But God says we want to get it right today. We want to get it right today. God, if I put my mouth on somebody, ah, I'll be dead. I ain't ever going to do that again. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. God, if I'm speaking against your purpose, oh, I've been speaking against your church. Oh, God, I've been speaking against this person. Oh, God, I've been doing this. Oh, God, I'll repent for today. I turn away from it. I ain't never going to do that again. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Oh, God. And I, glory to God. And amen, I need to pray in your house. God, we need deliverance. Change the atmosphere of my home. Oh, God, I pray God will be the atmosphere of heaven. Be the atmosphere of my house right now. In yes, the name of I want the same air mm. that's in heaven. Hallelujah. To flow through my house right now. I guarantee you're going to feel something. Some of y'all want to see pictures fall off the wall. Hallelujah. You're going to see things flowing in your house. Yes. Okay. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Anything that's not like God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, praise God. We'll come in your house, but we don't have to come. You can do this on your own. We want to activate the people that's able to do spiritual warfare on your own. Look at God. See, you can't cry about what you lost if you're not fighting for what you have. If you ain't doing what God told you to do, you're not fighting. Hallelujah. And you can't fight in your own strength. You got to apply the word of God. You got to apply the blood of Jesus. He don't care what your name is. He don't care what your title is. He don't care what your pedigree is. He only thing he responds to is power and authority. And the only power and authority that he responds to is the name of Jesus. Even when Michael came against the Prince of Persia, he says, the Lord is against you. The Lord rebuke you. He didn't say, I am Michael, captain of the hopes of the guards. He didn't say that. He says, the Lord. And we got to start rebuking. My God. We got to start doing some warfare. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all haven't been in the fight since grade school. Mm -hmm. God says, get your fight back. All right, Hallelujah. Stop fighting against his people and start fighting against the demons. Yes. Start fighting against Satan. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Use your breath in that land. Yes, Glory to God. Mm. Praise God. I said that because some of you are still in certain sicknesses because you have taken the doctor's diagnosis to heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now remember this. Hmm. Jesus had conducted the first communion service with his disciples. He had just did that. All right? We read that in Matthew. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. He had just did some things. Glory to God. All right? Praise God. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and here... Glory to God, in the Garden of Transfiguration, and we see the sacrifice given to us before the foundation of the world, sweating blood, praying so profusely that the veil between this realm and the heavenly realm was torn. And Moses and Elijah had to show up physically to assuage Jesus in person. But watch the sacrifice. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we see Jesus blessing the bread and then breaking the bread before he passed it. Don't we see that in 1 Corinthians 11? Glory to God, all right? I mean, and we see that in these other different places, all right? When we talk about the Last Supper and the communion, glory to God, what happened? He, he, he blessed the bread, and then he broke the bread, and then he passed it. Let me say it again. He blessed the bread, and then he broke the bread, and then he passed it. Glory to God. Praise God. Here it is. God always blesses us before he breaks us. Come on, all right. Hallelujah. He blessed the bread, and then he broke the bread. Yeah. And then he passed it. He blessed the bread. And then he broke the bread. And he said, this is my body, which shall be broken for you. And then he passed it. God always blesses before he breaks. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So stop complaining about the breaking and start praising God for the blessings. My God. Some of y'all won't get this to home. Because if you're being broken, it just means that God has already pronounced blessings on your life. He does not break you before he bless you. Come on, come on. Ah, I wish I had somebody in here this morning. Somebody need to take that word personal. Somebody need to get up and give God a praise for the breaking right now. Somebody need to take that word personal. See, you need to be able to say, I'm glad that that 
joke of left me. Yeah. Glory to God. God was blessing me. Yeah. I'm glad that God redirected me from that job. God brought me to bless me. Yeah. I'm glad that that door was shut in my face. Yeah. God was just breaking me to bless me. Anybody here with me this morning? I didn't understand it at the moment, but God had already blessed me before he broke me. Amen. And now I can praise him. Yes, thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Glory to God. Now thank I can give him honor. Now thank I can give him glory. Jesus. See, God took me to the yes. mountain. Glory to God. Before he allowed me to go to the valley, because he wanted me to know that I had an expected end. He wanted me to know that he had blessed and waiting for me on the other side of the room. Yeah, yeah though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. The rod and the staff. They come from me. The rod and the staff are part of his blessings. He's giving it to us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My God. He blesses you before he breaks you. So if you're in a breaking season right now, I want to encourage you that God has already pronounced blessings on your life. All you got to do is hang in there. Can I encourage you? If you hang in there, can I wait on the Lord to renew our strength? It's the wrath of the wings is eating. They shall win and shall not grow weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. But you got to wait on God. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Be strong, Joshua. Glory to God, be of good courage, of courage, Joshua. Didn't I tell you to be very courageous? Why did he, did he say that to him? Because things are going to come in this life that will make you get so scared. My God, my God. It will scare the living, the living uh, daylight out of you. Glory to God. Amen. But you've got to trust God mm. even when you can't see him. Trust him even when you can't trace him, as I always say. Trust him even when you don't feel it. Trust me when you don't look good. Lean not to your own understanding. Hallelujah. Praise God for the breaking. They say when the door is shut, hallelujah. What you supposed to do? Praise him in the hallway. I saw that the other day. I said, that's really good. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise him. Do you know that your praise will make room for you? Your praise make room for you. I taught y'all last year, amen, about hallelujah. When you sing hallelujah, when you say hallelujah, you literally are sending fire in the sky. Yeah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Yes, and you can't see it. My last book I wrote was Interdimensional Prayer. There is something happening when we pray. Yeah. It ain't just a bunch of words. When you're in right standing with God and you're praying, it's the most spiritual thing that you can do. Prayer is your greatest weapon. Besides prayer, praise. Glory to God. If you look at the Old Testament, when they used to go to battle, they put the praisers in the front. Yes, Judah. Yes. Judah. There you go. Praise God. We sung it this morning. We come to clap our hands and send up Judah. Yeah. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you start praising God in your house, yes, glory to God, y'all going to see some changes. All right. Glory to God. Your husband going to change. Your wife going to change. Your children going to change. Glory to God. But the problem is there's no praise. They don't hear no praise. All they hear is Nicki Minaj. All they hear is Janet Jackson. All they hear is whoever's out there. Jay-Z or whatever y'all listen to these days. Big Daddy Kane and I know I'm old. Glory to God and Tupac and all these dead, right? Glory to God. Praise God. But glory to God. I mean, now we need to learn to put some Hezekiah Walker on. Yeah. Put some Mary Mary on. Glory to God. Stomp. Whatever the case is. Change the atmosphere in your house. Put some Kirk Franklin on. Michael Stanley, somebody. You gotta like some of these guys and girls. Out there. Glory to God. Change the atmosphere in your house. Change the atmosphere. I remember I used to wake up, Glory to God, and I hear my mom and them praying. She, I mean, on Saturdays, she cleaned the whole house and she had, amen, at, at the time it was called Family Radio. Radio wasn't like it is now. Glory to God. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a certain station in Philadelphia, it was a Christian radio station, and they have music. I remember going in, and that was my Saturday. I just know mommy gonna have that on. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And all right, while I'm down there cleaning the cupboards or whatever, I'm listening to this, getting in my spirit. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. How you know we are the ones that train our children to be spiritual? All right. Some of y'all not receiving this. Don't blame the teachers. Don't blame society. It's your job, mommy. Right. It's your job, daddy. To 
and create that environment. Yes. It's your job to bring the children to church, not the pastors. Why don't y'all get a band and listen? Why don't you get up and bring the children to church? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise God. Hopefully you love your children more than we love your children. Glory to God. Praise God. But God bless us before he prays. Hallelujah. And sometimes we need to allow our praise to make room for them, our children. Some of y'all get this. Your praise will make room for you, somebody. Somebody need to give them a praise right now. Give them a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm about to come down. Let me do this a little bit more teaching for you this morning because this, this moment goes down theologically for some as another moment that we can that we that we uh, that confirms what we call the Trinity. Yes. All right? Yes. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right? Because when Peter said, let's make the temples, let's make the temple, God spoke from heaven and said, This is my, my beloved son, listen to him. All right, so this is one of those times when we see God the Father, God the Son, and we see the Holy Spirit. Yes. All right? Glory to God. Praise God. He said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Isn't that what he says? The other time when we see the Trinity is what? The baptism, right? Yes. The baptism. Glory to God. And the Holy Spirit showed up in the form of a dove. And God says, this is my beloved son. What did he say? Look at him. Yes, God. Look at him. In the baptism, he says, this is my beloved son. Look at him. In the transfiguration, he says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. That's it. That's it. And you have to decide if you're going to just look at him or if you're going to listen to him. Hmm. Uh, go up to God. Let me say it again. You have to decide if you're just going to look at him or you want to listen to him. We are living in a looking season. Ever since the pandemic, some people have left the church, they still have not come back. Oh, I watch it on, on Facebook. I watch it. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. They have decided to look at Jesus. Amen? But if you listen to him, he says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together, as such as some people are doing. Glory to God. Praise God. He told us, glory to God, we're one and make a chase of thousands, two can put ten thousand to flight. Amen? He told us in the multitude, glory to God, praise God, amen, of the men and women of God, there is safety. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen? Glory to God. God directed us, amen? He instituted the church for a reason. And God don't want us just to look at him. He wants us to listen to him. And then we see Jesus give some direction to his apostles. He said, when you go, when you get back down off the mountain, don't tell anybody about what you saw. Yeah. The question is why, Jesus? Well, why can't I tell anybody? Isn't it a good thing that Moses and Elijah showed up on the mountain? Isn't that a good thing? Glory to God. But he said, don't tell anybody what you saw. What did, look at how Jesus operated. First of all, he didn't take all the 12, he just took three. I'll explain that to you, right? Because not everybody can go to your mountain experience with you. Right. Not everybody could have been able to handle it. Glory to God. Praise God. And then, when something very spiritual did happen, he said, now, I don't want you to tell anybody until I am resurrected. Is what he said. All right. Until I am resurrected. The question is why? He says, I believe he, if they asked him that, he would have said, because if I thought that they could handle it, I would have brought them with me. Yeah. Oh, praise God. Yeah. If I thought that they could handle it, then they would be right here with you, Peter, James, and John. Mm, Jesus was saying that I know, I knew and I know that they wouldn't be able to handle it if they were there, so I definitely know that they would not be able to handle it from a second-hand account. Amen. All right. Amen. Oh, praise God, somebody. Amen. Praise God, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I know that they would not be able to handle it from a second-hand account. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Many of us are getting into trouble, hallelujah, because we're trying to make valley-dwelling people understand mountain-living blessings. Yes, God. All that you're doing, you know what happens when you do that? Is you're making them jealous or worse. Because they can't relate to your spirituality. They can't relate to your passion for God. They can't relate, amen, to why you're going so hard for this Jesus. So what happens is it's either going to make them jealous or it's going to turn them off. Hallelujah. And then some even get offended. But as soon as they get off the mountain, what happens? They bump into this man with his son that asks for mercy because his son would be thrown into the fire and thrown into the water. What did we learn about that? Praise God. How do you know that a medical diagnosis from the God does not allow you to be thrown into the water or thrown into the fire? Praise God. Praise God. 
It was a demon that was throwing him into the water. It was a demon that was throwing him into the fire. And how many know that there's some things that we hear, but we, got, but we put it to our spiritual perspective. How many, how many know we know which way we're supposed to go? Come on, sir. If it was just something medical, then why would it wait till you see fire to be thrown into it? How many know demons throw people into things? That's it, that's it. Lord God, that's not a medical diagnosis. If it was war, then you're like, no, we're not, no, we're not. Amen. And so Jesus had different methods. Glory to God. Of course, he was God in, in the flesh. Glory to God. Amen. But glory to God. Amen. But the man went to the disciples for healing, but they couldn't do it. So by the time he got to Jesus, he was just asking for mercy. Somebody said, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. He went to the disciples. Somebody out there said, well, I prayed to God in every way concerning my issue. And he's not responding. Glory to God. And if this is you, let me ask you. Have you ever just asked God for mercy? Somebody needs to say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. See, the man came to the disciples because they had a relationship with Jesus. But just because a person has a relationship with you don't mean that they have your heart or your spirit. My God. My God. Praise the Lord, somebody. My God. Just because you're in a relationship, glory to God, with someone, don't mean that you can do what the other person can do. Glory to God. I might know Michael Jordan, but it don't mean I can dunk like Michael Jordan. Glory to God. I might have a relationship with him, but it don't mean I can do exactly what he can do. Glory to God. When people get mad at the church because they expect the same relationship that they had with the elder or the pastor or someone, glory to God, amen, that they, they, they think that they're supposed to have that with everyone. Glory to God. Praise God. But I got news for you. It doesn't normally work like that. And you have to have emotional intelligence and be emotionally mature to understand that that probably is never going to be the case. But guess what? We may not be perfect, but we are making progress. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. There is no perfect Christian. There is no perfect church. But praise God. Somebody need to praise God that we are making progress. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, some of you went from smoking five packs of cigarettes to, to one. Praise God. Come on, give God, amen, some praise for Christ. Praise God. Glory to God. I want to encourage you today. Glory to God. Amen. You are better today than you were yesterday, is what I'm trying to say. That's progress. Some of you were alcoholic, and you went from, from drinking a fifth to a pint. Glory to God. That's not what we want. We want you to stop drinking, amen. Amen, but it's progress. Come on, give God a hand for that. Glory to God. Uh, you know, somebody just say, I am making progress. We are making progress. Praise God that we are making progress. That's progress. I used to cuss you out. Now I just tell you all. How many know that's progress? Glory to God. Glory to God. If you knew me 25, 30 years ago, we wouldn't be friends right now. I guarantee. <laughs> Praise the Lord, somebody. Glory to God. Somehow, I know it's just a pastor. Glory to God. Amen. But it's progress. It's progress. Watch where I'm going here as I'm closing. The man said, I brought my son to your disciples because they were close to you. As close as they were to you, at all times, I expected them to be just as anointed as you. I expected them to be just as wise as you. I expected them to be just as, watch this, loving as you. There was a man in the late 1800s. He lived in India. He wasn't a Christian, but he heard about a Christian revival. He said, I just want to go to this revival and see about this Jesus thing. Amen. And so he walked up the 72 steps that led to the church, the place where they was having a revival. And when he got there, he was met by an usher. The usher looked at him and said, you can't come in here. He said, why? He said, because you're not dressed appropriately. The man said, listen, I just want to come in and hear about this Jesus. The usher constantly told him that he couldn't come in. He, he wasn't dressed appropriately. After a while, an elder came. The elder came, and the elder literally pushed the man down the, step, the 72 steps that he walked up. He pushed the man. And as the man was looking up at the service that was going up, he said, I think that I can love their Jesus, but I can't stand his Christians. The name of that man was Mahatma Gandhi. 
Gandhi. And the reason why he never became Christian was because of what happened to him at somebody's church. And how many know you gotta be so careful of how you treat the men and the women of God? Because guess what? They're not our people. They're God's people. Glory to God. And when we get to heaven, we don't want God to say, look what you did to this person. And look what your actions and your words and your attitudes and your facial expressions did to this group of people. And look what you did to these people. Are you loving? Do you exemplify the love of God that we're supposed to have as men and women of God? Do you have enough grace to allow a person to be themselves but still be in the house of God? God ain't worried about what you got on. on. The Bible says, come as you are. We understand protocol, we get it. But how I many know we should never turn another person away? Amen. That was not the Holy Spirit. That was not the Spirit of God. To push a person down the steps simply because he wanted to get in and learn about Jesus. Gandhi, one of the greatest figures of all time. What would he, what would he have been if he would have turned Christian oh my God. on that day? Yeah. Somebody need to say, Lord have mercy. Know who I blame? I blame the church. Somebody need to say, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Because we have turned so many great people away. We have hurt so many people. And I just believe that God is calling us back. Amen? He's restoring us to who we need to be. Get rid of the attitudes. Some of us have so much emotions. Glory to God. Some of us have so many opinions. And God says, get rid of it. Come into me. All you that are heavy laden and weary, and I will give you rest. He says, cast all your burdens on me, and I will sustain you. God just wants us to come into his house. I gotta leave it there for today. Glory to God. God just wants to fellowship with us. God just wants to sup with us. He wants to be your God. He really literally wants to be your father. Glory to God. And he wants to have a relationship with you. The end of the story is God can beat the devil out of the boy. Glory to God. Amen. The boy was okay. Glory to God. Amen. It was not a medical issue. It was a spiritual issue. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If there's anybody in here that thinks that they need deliverance, hallelujah. That they, what they're going through right now is a spiritual issue. I want to let you know that this altar is open for you. There's nothing that you're going through that intimidates God. God is not scared of your problems. There's nothing that you're going through that God does not have the power to deliver you from. Hallelujah. Some of our situations are spiritually motivated. And God wants to turn it around for us today. God wants to handle it today. It's not going to be the preacher. It's going to be the Holy Spirit. It's going to be God. He's going to do all the work. He wants to deliver somebody today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants to deliver somebody today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants you to be in liberty. He wants you to be free. Hallelujah. You've been in bondage for too long. Hallelujah. But God says today, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That stops. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. And right now I call all the work of the Hallelujah. Of the crucifixion. Hallelujah. The resurrection. And the glory.
glorification. Hallelujah. And I call on all the power and authority in heaven. God, that you say that we have. Hallelujah. You've given us power. Hallelujah. Over demons, God. Hallelujah. You've given us power to tread on serpents. Hallelujah. Hey, God. And even right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anything that's not like God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That has been, hallelujah, oppressing. Hallelujah. Your daughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sister. Even right now. Hallelujah. I command you to take your flight. And I command you to loose this woman of God right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I command, hallelujah, every oppressive spirit, hallelujah, to go to a dry and airy place. Hallelujah. I command you to go to the abyss. Hallelujah. To your weight. Hallelujah. Your time of judgment. Right now in the name of Jesus. Some of the things, hallelujah, that you're going through, hallelujah, glory to God, has been spiritually enacted. God has been trying to get your attention. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he has allowed.